Multiplying Decimals, Humans on Earth. Hello, everyone. In our previous lessons, we learned about decimals, but that is not all. You know how to add and subtract decimals, too, and today we will also learn how to multiply them. We learn decimals through the exploration of our solar system and its planets. Last time we talked about our Earth, and today we will discover something more. Last time we also talked about being assertive. By being assertive, we can state our ideas and accept and value other ideas as well. As a continuation to mastering this skill, we will do a small activity before starting the session. This activity will show you how important it is to communicate and listen to others respectfully. Our game is called the Memory Test Game. You will hear and see a list of words appear on the screen. Listen and look carefully because you cannot write down any of the words. We will see later how many of the words that you could remember. Are you ready? Here are the words. Dream. Sleep. Tired. Blanket. Night. Alarm. Snore. Pillow. Okay now, make sure you haven't written any of the words down just yet. The important thing is that you have to always remain focused, make eye contact with whomever is talking to you, make sure you are responding with nods and making respectful comments, and most importantly, do not interrupt when someone else is talking. This is what it means to be a respectful communicator. Now back to the list. Write down as many words as you can remember from the initial list. How was that? Were you able to remember the words easily? It may have been slightly difficult, right? Especially with the break and the discussion about respectful communication that happened in between, hearing the list and writing it down. Know that we must pay attention to people when they are speaking, especially when it is an important conversation. Being both assertive and respectful as a communicator will help you interact with others, work together, and problem solve more easily. Are we ready to head back to our solar system? Let's go! The last time we talked about our Earth, we said that water covers 71 hundredths of its surface. On this Earth, we live with other living things, and just like other living things, we require water nutrients, air, and sunlight in order to live. But do you know that about 99 hundredths of the mass of your human body contains just six chemical elements? Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus, and one hundredth make up the other elements. Potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, and magnesium. How much water you drink makes a big impact on the amount of oxygen and hydrogen in your body and affects the relative composition of the rest of the elements in your body. The table shows us the mass of some elements that make up a human body having a mass of 64 kilograms. But to find the mass of these elements, you need to solve some multiplication. Let's start by finding the mass of calcium. Calcium is mainly found in bones and teeth. To find the mass of calcium, we need to multiply 16 hundredths by 6. Let's use a grid of hundredths. 0 0.16 is 16 hundredths. So let's shade 16 parts of the hundredths grid. Repeat shading six times more groups of sixteen hundredths to see what sixteen hundredths times six is. So how many hundredths are shaded? Good. Ninety-six hundredths are shaded. This means that sixteen hundredths times six equals ninety-six hundredths. But do we have to use grids every time we need to multiply? Did you notice that sixteen hundredths times six is ninety-six hundredths? 
16 hundredths times 6 is the same as multiplying 16 times 6. The only difference is that the answer will be in the hundredths to get 96 hundredths instead of 96. So we can deduce that to multiply a decimal by a whole number, we must first multiply the numbers as we do with whole numbers. Then, we count the number of decimal places in the factor and place the decimal point in the product to have as many places in the product as there are in the decimal factor. Oxygen is the most abundant element in the human body. It's mainly found bound to hydrogen in the form of water that makes up about three-fifths of the human body. Now to find the mass of oxygen, we need to multiply five and two-tenths by eight. To do so, we can simply multiply 52 by eight as if we have no decimal point to get 416. We also need to count the number of decimal places in five and two-tenths. There is only one decimal place in the decimal factor, so there should also be one decimal place in the product. The mass of oxygen is 41 and 6 tenths of a kilogram. Now let's find the mass of hydrogen. To do so, you will have to multiply 3 and 4 hundredths by 2. Try to solve it on your own, please. You multiplied 304 by 2 and got 608. Then, counted two decimal places in the decimal factor. So there should be two decimal places in the product as well. As a result, the mass of hydrogen is 6 and 8 hundredths of a kilogram. Phosphorus is like calcium and is found mainly in bones and teeth. To calculate the mass of phosphorus, we need to multiply 8 tenths by 8 tenths. In this case, both factors have decimal places. So let's use a grid of hundredths to better understand how the multiplication works here. The first factor is 8 tenths, so we shade 8 tenths vertically. That is equivalent to 80 hundredths. The second factor is 8 tenths as well, so we shade 8 tenths horizontally this time. Now how many hundredths are shaded by both colors? Count them. 8 times 8 shaded to get 64 parts shaded. This means that 64 hundredths of the whole is shaded. It also means that 8 tenths times 8 tenths equals 64 hundredths. Did you notice that since the first factor has one decimal place and the second factor has one decimal place also, the product ended up having two decimal places? So the product has as many decimal places as the sum of the decimal places in the factors. All cells in the body require potassium in order to function. To find its mass, we need to multiply 6 tenths by 4 tenths. The two factors have decimal places, so let's use the grid of hundredths. The first factor is 6 tenths, so we shade 6 tenths vertically. The second factor is 4 tenths, so we shade 4 tenths horizontally. Now how many hundredths are shaded by both colors? Count them and you will get 6 times 4 to get 24 shaded parts, or 24 hundredths. So 6 tenths times 4 tenths is 24 hundredths. The first factor has one decimal place. The second factor has one decimal place as well. Together, that makes two decimal places in all, so the product has two decimal places as well. Therefore, the product has as many decimal places as the sum of the decimal places in the factors. Carbon is also an abundant element in the human body. To find the mass of carbon, we need to multiply 1 and 85 hundredths by 6 and 4 tenths. First, we multiply 185 by 64 as if we have no decimal point. To do so, we start multiplying 4 by 185 and then 6 tenths by 185. 
Now all that is left is to add the products, count the total number of decimal places in the factors, and mark the location of the decimal point in the product such that it has as many decimal places as the total. There are two decimal places in the first decimal factor and one decimal place in the second decimal factor. That means we have a total of three decimal places that should be shown in our product. At last, we can say that the mass of carbon is 11 and 840 thousandths of a kilogram, which is the same as saying 11 and 84 hundredths of a kilogram, since there are zero thousandths. Nitrogen is found in the lungs, and to find its mass, multiply 12 and 8 tenths by 16 hundredths. Try to complete the multiplication on your own, please. Great! You multiplied 128 by 6 first and then by 1 tenths. You added the products and counted the total number of decimal places. There is one decimal place in the first factor and two more in the second decimal factors. This means that there is a total of three decimal places in the product as well to get the mass of nitrogen. It is two and 48 thousandths of a kilogram. So to multiply two decimal numbers, multiply them vertically as if you have whole numbers. You do not need to align the decimal points. After having calculated the product, count the number of decimal places in the factors and place the decimal point in the product so that the product has the same number of decimal places as both the factors combined. Now look at the following multiplication problems. Without multiplying, I want you to find the number of decimal places in the product, okay? Look at the first one. How many decimal places do we have in the factors? Yes, in the first factor, we have two decimal places. And in the second factor, we have another two decimal places. So the total number of decimal places in the product is four. Now, if we multiply eight hundredths times three and four thousandths, how many decimal places will the product have? Great. The product will have two and three more decimal places. So the product will have five decimal places. Similarly, in the case of three thousandths times four thousandths, how many decimal places will there be in the product? Good! We will have six decimal places in our product. And what about the last one? That's it! The product has three decimal places! Now let's practice some more. You can use a paper and a pen to solve them. Ready? Great! Please multiply 12 hundredths by 4 thousandths. Great effort! Let's check your answer. Did you get the same product? How did you place the decimal point? To solve it correctly, you should multiply 12 by 4 and then count the decimal places in the factors. There are two decimal places in the first factor and three more in the second factor. So the product has five decimal places. The total number of decimal places is greater than the number of digits of the product. So we have to place zeros to the left of the product and one more to the left of the decimal point. This will show that we do not have any whole part. Now try to multiply six and 48 hundredths by 12 hundredths. Please check your answer when you are ready. Good. Did you place the decimal point correctly? Very good. You completed the product by putting a zero to the left of the product since you need four decimal places. Now, you have just multiplied six and 48 hundredths by 12 hundredths to get 7,776 ten thousandths. What if we change the place of the decimal point in the factors? What do you think will happen? That's it. We will get the same digits in the product, but the place of the decimal point will change. So let's complete some multiplication problems. When we complete these multiplication products, 
we will always get 7,776, but the location of the decimal point will change. This means that the second product will have five decimal places, the third will have six decimal places, the fourth will have three decimal places, and the fifth will have two decimal places. Notice how one of the factors is always the same, 6 and 48 hundredths in all of the multiplication. It's only the second factor that is changing. So look at the products and compare them with 6 and 48 hundredths in each case. What do you notice? Is the product in all cases greater than 6 and 48 hundredths? In the first three cases, the product is less. And in the last two cases, the product is greater than 6 and 48 hundredths. Do you know why? Let's see what is common about the second factors of the first three problems. Yes, 12 hundredths, 12 thousandths, and 12 ten thousandths are all less than 1. Now look at the last two cases. What is common in about each of the second factors? Yes, 1 and 2 tenths as well as 12 are both greater than 1. So what can you conclude? When multiplying a number by a decimal less than 1, the product will be smaller than the number being multiplied. This is because we are finding a fractional amount of a quantity. Now compare the given amounts without performing any calculations. 35 and 24 hundredths is multiplied by 32 hundredths. 32 hundredths is less than 1, so the product will be less than 35 and 24 hundredths. Now compare the product of the second problem with 32 hundredths. It is being multiplied by 35 and 24 hundredths, which is greater than 1. So the product will be greater than 32 hundredths. Which factor should we look at for the next comparison problem? We need to look to compare with 123 and 48 hundredths. So, we should look at 1 and 4 tenths. 1 and 4 tenths is greater than 1, so the product will be greater as well. Great, you got it! For the next one, we are comparing the product with 2 and 379 thousandths, so we need to consider the other factor, which is 4 tenths. 4 tenths is less than 1, so the product will be less as well. And lastly, we need to compare the product with 2 and 7 tenths, so we look at the other factor, which is 2 and 879 thousandths. This other factor is greater than 1, so the product will be greater too. Knowing if your product will be greater than one of the factors or less can help you while checking your product especially when you are thinking about whether the position of the decimal point is right or not. So keep in mind that when you multiply by a decimal less than 1, your product will be less than the other factor. In our lesson, you learned how to multiply decimals, and so I would like you to look at this magic square. The sums of each row, column, and diagonal are the same. So if you add horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, you will have the same sum. Our task now is to check if multiplying each of the numbers in the magic square by 1 and 2 tenths will still give us a magic square. You are on your way to mastering multiplying decimals. But what about having some more practice while having fun as well? Here are some links that have been shared with you all you need to do is follow them and play along. Practice and enjoy the games until we meet again. Thank you.